Hello, and thank you for joining us for another one of Sporty's how-to videos. Today we are going to cover how to edit the sensitivity of Flight Simulator hardware in the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 program. Our mission today has us flying over the Oracoke Islands in the Cirrus SR-22. You'll see that we have the NFS Cirrus side yoke plugged in. That's the control hardware we'll be using today. And let's go ahead and open up our flight control surfaces. Now you'll notice I have ailerons already applied to left axis X and elevator applied to left axis Y. We're just going to focus on left axis X. So we'll head on over to sensitivity. All right, and here's our default settings. Sensitivity is at zero, dead zone zero, neutral is at zero. Let's go ahead and test the default settings in the system. So we'll save it, we'll go back. All right, now I'm gonna do a three second roll to the left, okay? And then we'll go about back to neutral and let's try another one to the right this time. Two, three, okay. So we get about 60 degrees to the horizon uh, in a three second roll. So again, this is the default roll rate or sensitivity settings uh, for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Now let's go back and edit some of these and see how they change how the aircraft reacts in the simulator. So we're going to go ahead and take sensitivity down 100%. So I'm going to have to give a lot of control inputs to yield anything in the simulator. Let's see what those extremes give us uh, as we jump back into the digital airplane. Uh, we're going to test the three second roll again, so here we go. All right, and now we're only getting about maybe 30 degrees against the horizon, maybe even less. So there's a slight roll to the right, uh, as you can see, and I'm doing full stick deflections here. So as we've taken the sensitivity down 100%, uh, full stick deflections are yielding almost no change in the simulator. Let's go back to our controls page and let's go to the opposite end of that spectrum. Let's take sensitivity all the way up to 100%. So now any small little inputs I give to this stick should yield the most extremes. We'll make sure we're saving all these so they are put back into the system. And here we go, let's do another three second roll. All right, and I am almost 90 degrees here. As I roll back out and let's get a little bit more in line with those islands. It's a good reference point. We'll try another roll here in just a second. All right, as you can see, you know, again, the same amount of full deflection for three seconds is now 90 degrees. So we see that with uh, the higher sensitivity yoke, smaller little inputs yield a lot more uh, change in the simulator world. So now we've seen the low end of the spectrum, we've seen the high end. Uh, you're able to go ahead and tweak those to whatever you'd like, which will create the exact flying experience and profile that you expect in your airplane and also based off your hardware. So I'm going to go ahead and take these sensitivities back to zero. It'd be nice if there was a, a type in of zero, but as you can see, you got to move the cursor to the zero point. And if you stop at one or minus one, you, you won't notice those. Uh, another thing is the dead zone. So what this does is it's going to make sure that uh, there are no changes sent to the system until we get beyond a certain input level. So nothing's changed yet as I'm pulling back and there are the actual changes on the x-axis. Rolling to the right, nothing, and then it happens. So this is good if you have a fidgety system to where uh, it has trouble staying centered. Creating a 5 to 10 percent dead zone gets rid of uh, the jumpiness, if you will, and it requires just a little input. Next we'll talk about neutral. This changes where your uh, circle starts, if you will, on this graph. With a positive 45 percent, we're now below the uh, intersection of X and Y. So we always start with a left tendency roll when our hands are off the yoke. Uh, I haven't really found many uses for this neutral edit. I guess if you want your plane to always be giving, you know, five degrees left roll, uh, output then power to you, but I've yet to find applicability. So we'll take this back to zero-ish, minus one, 
And, you know, we just focused on the left axis X for roll, but you can also apply this to elevator as I push forward and pull back, and also rudder control if you have something uh, input to the system and what you're used to in your airplane is a little off from what Microsoft Flight Simulator is showing. These are ways you can edit it to be more precise towards what you believe. So I hope this video was informative. Uh, I hope it's able to help you as you set up your flight simulator, uh, get you one more step towards realism. And as always, I hope you have fun flying.